Hi, thanks for joining us again for this week's active movement session from Connections Neurodisability and Paces Sheffield. This week, unlike other weeks, we are working, as you can see, on the floor or in a lying position. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the floor, and I'll talk to you about that in a few moments. For those of you who haven't been here before, welcome and thank you very much for joining us. These are active movement sessions for people with movement disorders. So neurological conditions such as cerebral palsy, um, head injury, stroke and so on. Um, this particular session is really accessible to anybody of any level. Some of the other sessions we've done have been more suited to people who have a slightly better level of balance or control of their movements. But this really is quite a, um, a sort of lower level, simpler position for almost anybody to work in. That said, I will just give a little bit of um, a rule of thumb is that we do ask that people work at these activities at their own level. Please be careful at home doing these by yourself or with a carer or a friend um, and just take care to make sure you're not doing things that aren't outside of your own ability. Now, the other thing is we, we do recommend that you seek um, some professional guidance from a medical professional. Just check that they are happy with you doing an online movement programme um, before you take part just to keep everybody safe. So, First things first, let's just talk a little bit about the position we're working in today. So as I said, I'm choosing a mat on the floor. Uh, if you are able to get down to the floor and you are comfortable on the floor and you can get back up, more importantly, then please do so. If you can be hoisted down to the floor, that's ideal. Or if you can get yourself down, that's brilliant. Um, I've got a mat just because it does take a little bit of cushioning. It just makes it a little bit more comfortable for most people. Um, but it's not compulsory. If you're comfortable enough on the floor, we're not doing any weight bearing through our arms or our legs or our tummies or anything like that. Now, the other thing that I've got with me today is a variety, really, of pillows and so on. Now, what's important is that you can achieve a comfortable position lying on your back. So you could be lying on your bed. You could be lying with your feet up on a sofa um, lengthways. But what's important is that then you are supported correctly throughout your whole body. Now, really important in this is that you don't have your back arched too far this way or you're not too far arched this way. So let me just demonstrate that the back, the bottom, your lower back needs to be touching the floor if possible, or at least not stretched outwards too far. So what's really important is to fiddle around before you get started today. Pause the, pause the video and move things around for yourself. So it might be that actually you need quite a lot of support to be comfortable in a reclined position. So for example, if you bring it quite far up, you might need to be lying on the sofa with cushions here, on the bed with cushions here. You might just need a single cushion and that lifting your head up to there. You may need to keep your legs slightly bent or even have pillows under your knees to take a little bit of pressure out of your lower back like so. Do have a little fiddle around. We need to have some freedom of movement, so too much cushioning won't help. And you might need to move the cushions as we move through the different parts of the activity. But just have a little play around and see how you go. Personally, I need a fairly low pillow, but I do need a pillow. And in fact, what I tend to do is probably folding that one in half will probably give me just about enough support that it won't put any extra strain on my lower back. So if anything like that can work for you, then go for it. Oh, it's not going to stay put now, I'll put it there, is it? Never mind, I'll move it in when I need to. Lovely. So one other thing. Today really is a shoes and socks off type activity. Um, everything else we've done has had a bit of weight bearing in it. And so I've generally said to use what suits you. But really, if you are able to have unsupported feet, then do. If you have slightly um, overly sensitive feet and things like that, you could keep socks on but preferably completely barefoot is, is the ideal. Um, the only other thing we need in terms of equipment is what we've had our trusty rolling pin or our trusty broom from the previous sessions as well. So if you can get hold of a short, uh, a short stick, a long stick, sorry, like this, that should be pretty much what we need. Um, we'll be using that after, a, a, um, after we've got in our first position. 
Now, I'm going to sit up and down a bit between the movements. I'm not expecting you to do that, but just so I can speak to you and tell you what you need to do next and then demonstrate a little bit. I probably will keep moving around. If you need to stop and start, please do um, just take it at your own pace. Most important of all, enjoy what you are doing and make sure you are trying to move. If you're trying to move, then this is very worthwhile. Making your body, make a connection between the brain and the body is really the aim of what we're trying to do, telling your body to move. If you can't do as much as I am doing, does not matter at all as long as you're trying to do something. OK, so first things first, we need to get a nice straight lying position. Now, just like sitting, just like standing, a straight lying position, we're sort of going for that standing to attention type position. So. You need your knees, your feet, hips, all in a lovely straight line. In fact, I'll just demonstrate from this angle. Nice and straight, okay? And your shoulders need to be in line with your hips as well. Okay, so you need to bring yourself down into lying or you need to adjust yourself when you've achieved a lying position, okay? So arms must be down by your side if possible. If you find that really hard because you have tightness perhaps in your arms and your shoulders, then you can try to bring your hands as slow down as possible. So you're trying to move them further down than you normally would. But if that means keeping them here, that's absolutely fine. But ideally, right down here by your side with your fingers open and your palms flat down. And then keeping your head in the middle. So I'm really sorry, you're going to have to keep looking to the screen and then back to the ceiling. But nicely in line, keeping your head straight. And I lie straight. I lie straight. One, two, three, four, five. Lovely. Now, first of all, as with every week, we're going to take some deep breaths. Fill your chest with some air and blow them out. And because we're lying, we're not going to move any other part of our body. We're just going to focus on filling those lungs with air and then letting them come out again as well. And just three times, three nice deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. So I breathe in through my nose, breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. With each breath out, let your body relax further into this lovely straight position. And last time, breathe in through your nose, breathe in. And breathe out. Lovely. OK, so the first move we're going to do today is just to move our head ever so slightly to move our neck and get a little bit of movement all the way through that side. So what we're trying to try and do is we're trying to take our head as if we are looking over our shoulder on each side. If you are able to do this without a pillow, then absolutely do, um, because it will mean you can get a slightly further move. If you can't, that is absolutely fine. And if there's someone you have helping you or you need to help you and they can help you just guide this movement very, very gently, then by all means do. So we're turning our chin to the side. Try not to keep your chin down, try and keep it lifted and off to the side as if you're putting your ear against the floor on one side and then against the floor on the other side. So please try to join in with the tasks as usual if you can, although it is a little tricky when we're moving our head and neck, I know. So get that nice straight line position, keeping it there. And I turn my head to the left. I turn my head to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Keeping your chin lifted so you're looking in a straight line away from you. And back to the middle. I turn it back to the middle. One, two, three, four, five. Correct. That lying position if you've struggled to keep it. And I turn my head to the right. I turn my head to the right. One, two, three, four, five. And I turn it back to the middle. I turn it back to the middle. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And then repeat one more time on each side. I turn my head to the left. 
I turn my head to the left. One, two, three, four, five. As I said, trying to push that ear into the floor. And I turn it back to the middle, back to the middle. One, two, three, four, five. And I turn my head to the right. I turn my head to the right. One, two, three, four, five. And I turn it back to the middle. I turn it back to the middle. One, two, three, four, five. Lovely. So correct that lying position again. Make sure the minute we try and move our bodies, it's quite likely that we'll lose that straight position. So do just keep correcting back to it after every move. So next we're going to use the broom handle, the stick, the long stick. Now the first thing to do is if you've got someone helping you that or if um, you can reach for it yourself. But what we're trying to achieve is a really good grasp on the stick. So just like through the other positions we've used the stick in, in lying and sit, uh, sorry, in sitting and in standing, we're going to try and get our hands right the way round and keep our thumb out or round here. But try not to get your thumb inside your hand here, okay? And try and make sure your fingers are nicely in line, not bunched up and what have you, okay? So we're trying to get hold with both hands. Now, if it's too difficult to do both hands, do one hand at a time. That is absolutely fine because it can be tricky for some people, but make sure you use both sides of your body. So do repeat it for both sides if you're going to do it one at a time. Now, what's important here is we're going to try to keep your elbow extended as we lift and control this movement from our shoulder whilst holding on the whole time. As I've said, if your version of a lift is only a tiny way, that is absolutely fine. If you can get your arms right up above your head, also absolutely fine. Go with your own body and what you know best about your body. Go to where you can keep control of the movement. That's the really important bit, okay? So we're lying down. Starting first of all, I hold onto the stick with both hands. I hold onto the stick with both hands. One, two, three, four, five, and then correct your lying position. So your elbows straight, your back's nice and flat, your head in the middle, toes turned up if you can and keeping them hip distance apart. And I lie straight, I lie straight. One, two, three, four, five. And I lift the stick up, I lift the stick up, one, two, three, four, five, and I bring it down, I bring it down, one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to repeat that a couple of times. If you can go, I haven't got much room here, but if you can go right the way above your head to here, please, please do. I'm going to shuffle myself down just to demonstrate that. Um, if you can't, do not worry at all. But if you can go that high, then absolutely do so. So, and as I said before, some of you might find it a little easier with your legs bent if, you, if you're going to go higher as well. So I lift the stick up. I lift the stick up. One, two, three, four, five. I still can't reach right up there. There we go, I can and I bring it down, I bring it down. One, two, three, four, five. Try and make that movement smooth for the full count. And as I haven't mentioned yet today, I must do, please try and join in saying the tasks whilst you're doing it. And that will really help control it. I lift the stick up one last time. I lift the stick up. One, two, three, four, five and I bring it down I bring it down one two three four five lovely and then when you come to letting go from the stick please really focus on letting go actively with each hand so telling your fingers to loosen and let go especially if you have quite a tight spastic grip or st stiffness in your muscles. I let it go. I let it go. One, two, 
three, four, five. Lovely. So the next thing we're going to do is move down to our legs. OK, so if, as I said, it may help if you prop yourself up a little further at this point, it will give you a bit of a visual check for your legs, but it might also just make it a bit more comfortable for some people in this position. But I'm going to stay completely flat for the purposes of demonstrating to you. So when we move our legs, we're going to move each foot in turn. And the really important thing to do is try and keep the rest of your body super still, only moving the one bit of the body that we're talking about each time. We're going to put each foot flat in turn. So I'll show from the front first of all. We're going to be in a lying position, excuse me, in a lying position. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five and stretch out. If you see, we can't, don't let your knee drop in. Don't let your knee drop out. If you can help it, try and keep it in the middle. You want to try and bring your foot quite close to your bottom if you are able and if it's comfortable. And you need to try and keep your feet pointing forward away from you rather as you go. So that's really important, thinking about where you position your foot. And this is where it would probably help to have someone around when you're doing these who can give you a bit of visual um, feedback of your position or can help prompt you a little. That would always really help as well. So as with everything we do, we go back to that lovely straight position before we start. So arms down by your side, shoulders back, head nicely lifted with your chin up. And I lie straight. I lie straight. One, two, three, four, five. And I bend my left leg. I bend my left leg. One, two, three, four, five, and put my foot flat. I put my foot flat. One, two, three, four, five. Lovely. And then what you've got to try and do is keep that foot position there. So I keep it there. I keep it there. One, two, three three, four, five. And then we're going to lift your toes up on that foot and try to stretch that leg out. So I stretch my leg out. I stretch my leg out. One, two, three, four, five. And let's repeat again on that right, uh, on that left leg, sorry. I put my left foot flat I put my left foot flat. One, two, three, four, five. I keep it there. I keep it there. One, two, three, four, five. Turn your toes up and I stretch it out. I stretch it out. One, two, three four, five, and then repeating with the right leg. I put my right foot flat. I put my right foot flat. One, two, three, four, five. I keep it there. I keep it there. One, two, three, four, five. Turn those right toes up and I stretch it out. I stretch it out. One, two, three, four, five. And one more time on the right side. I put my right foot flat. I put my right foot flat. One, two, three, four, five. I keep it there. I keep it there. One, two, three, four, five. Turn those toes up and I stretch it out. I stretch it out. One, two, three, four, five. And I lie straight. I lie straight. One, two, three, four, five. Really good, lovely. And if you're feeling really brave, you can do both legs together as well. 
So let's do that. Trying to pull both knees in at the same time and control them moving in the same way at the same time. Let me just quickly demonstrate. What we're looking for is not putting one foot and then the other foot, but trying to bend both legs together, put both feet down and putting them in line with one another at the same time. Okay. So lying nice and straight to start. And I put both feet flat. I put both feet flat. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure then that your knees don't flop to the sides or out apart. Try and keep them in line with your hips. I keep it there. I keep it there. One, two, three, four, five. And then turning both toes up. And I stretch them out. I stretch them out. One, two, three, four, five. One more time. I bet put both feet flat. I put both feet flat. One, two, three, four, five. I keep them there. I keep them there. One, two, three, four, five. And I stretch them out. I stretch them out. Toes up to do so. One, two, three, four, five. And then bring your toes nicely in line again. Turn them up, hands down, shoulders back, legs straight, arms straight. And I lie straight. I lie straight. One, two, three, four, five. Lovely. So that kind of brings us to the end of the lying movements we're going to do today. As I said, they're very kind of low level and very kind of basic movements. There's all sorts of things we can do to build up and break down different movements. But these are really good starter movements for you. If you find them a little too easy, let us know. There's lots of ways we can help you to build them up a little bit. But if these are just right for you and just trying to start moving an arm or moving a leg, in a reclined position, it's a really good position to start doing so. Gravity is in your favour when you're lying down, so everything else is taken away from it. So you can just try and move one bit of your body and control your movements. Perfect for anyone developing their active movement participation. So thank you so much for joining us. We would love to hear how people are getting on using these videos at home. If you're finding them useful, if you're finding them awfully hard or incredibly easy we'd really like to know about it um, and we'd really really like to know if there's anything specific anybody would like us to be focusing on because that will give us future ideas for videos um, we really appreciate you joining in taking part and what's really great is that people are at home taking part moving their bodies and keeping their mood up during this extended lockdown period. So well done if you've got yourself on the mat or on the bed or on the sofa and joined in today. It's a thumbs up from this end. So well done. And um, thank you so much from Paces and Connections Neurodisability Services. We hope to see you in our next video. Thanks and goodbye. <laughs>